This is the Dan Levator Show with the Stugats Podcast. It is possible, probable even, that I will look ridiculous very soon about what I'm about to say because the Miami Heat have already made me look ridiculous because I have not trusted this team. I thought they were going to lose to Milwaukee. I thought that the way that Greg Popovich feels today was something that would be worth having only a tiny chance at having your life be the next 10 years. But short term, this Heat team has surprised me and Jimmy Butler is saying this is our year. And when I watched Lakers Nuggets last night, I said, no, it's not. No, no, it is not. No, it is not your year. Um, the sport has changed a great deal, and LeBron helped change it. But when two seven-footers can do all the things LeBron was doing, and one of them looks like a loaf of bread, and no one's stopping him. No. But Anthony Davis can also put up 40, but you don't have one of those either. You got Jimmy. And you can keep going after those guys with the, the six foot six guy. They changed the sport over the last 10 years. LeBron changed the sport. The six six and six nine guys could do it, but now the seven footers can do it. <laughs> and after the game, when Caldwell Pope says the only difference with Jokic and LeBron between them is that LeBron can jump higher. No, there's another difference. One of them's seven feet. <laughs> I tend to believe whatever Jimmy Butler says. I do. He has arrived at a point for me where Jimmy Butler says, hey, this is our year. Who am I to doubt Jimmy Butler? And this is why I feel like an idiot. I don't want to doubt it either. Not for a second do I wish to doubt it. But I happen to believe, because I've told you guys, you guys live this with me. In the pandemic, the best basketball I've ever seen was played with Jokic and Murray. It's the best I've ever seen. Bubble, no fans, no flights, no anything. And they may lose that series because LeBron is great and Anthony Davis is great. And I'm glad Amin's here because he could break it down for us. All I'm here to tell you is, holy sh Boston and Miami is going to look a lot different than that. And you're not going to like it very much. <laughs> Compared to what that was last night, what Boston and Miami looks like as positionless ball, it's going to look a lot less aesthetically pleasing than that. Oh, good. I cannot <laughs> wait. Last night was too pretty. Uh, that's not playoff basketball. Come on. Throw, throw an elbow around. <laughs> Muddy it up. Yeah. That's not pure basketball. The, uh, oh, it's the thing again. All right, the Nuggets and Lakers game was like a surge. Just keep precision. doing the show. I mean, we keep, I, we keep I, going. I, we keep going. We don't mention it. It is a it. jarring we, thing. We just, yes, mean. fire alarms are bad, we, but we don't have time around here. Yeah. If, You'd if, be surprised if the microphones the don't actually pick it up. It's like Snuffleupagus. <laughs> like only Big Bird sees it. Oh, that's how it used to be until they ruined Sesame Street. I mean, if I may, I'm not making this up when I say this. You had a point there. Not making this up. Yesterday, I saw Mike Ryan in action, trying to help Stugatz wherever he can, muttering under his breath. Yeah, I'm going to have to get an ashtray in this garage here. I'm going to have to tell the... Uh, oh, because you got one. I believe Stugatz evidently has been smoking in the garage and just throwing things on the floor, oh and it would be literally perfect if he literally burnt this building down it's while we were doing a show. Brand new building, Stugatz. Yeah. What are you doing, man? Let's take care of it. Let's make it look, keep it looking nice. We did. We got an ashtray. Mike, you might want to put some water in that ashtray because I am throwing heaters into, there's a plastic bag in there. There is no ashtray yet. It hasn't arrived. Please uh, stop. Wait, Whatever you what think is, is the throwing? ashtray, please stop throwing <laughs> lit cigarettes into it. Oh, God. I got I to gotta go. <laughs> There's a little bucket right next to the door. Someone put it there and said, hey, this Not is your ashtray. ashtray. Move it the one forward. one that says propane on it? Yes. Come on, Stugatz. Oh, no. There is, like, like mystery sealant that's, like, wet on the floor in the garage that I noticed this morning because I was stepping over, which, like, might be flammable. Like, you should actually be careful with where you're throwing cigarettes. I'm not joking when I tell you. The fire alarm goes off here every day. I'm not making this up when I say Mike Ryan just ran outside. This is not a joke. Yesterday, he was thinking about how do I tell management to put something out here because it would appear Stugatz is throwing lit cigarette butts by the dozen on the floor in a new garage. One at a time, though. I mean, not smoking you're, a dozen. You're unbelievable, man. What do you mean I'm unbelievable? I smoke cigarettes. I throw them out on the floor. That's what I do. I stomp on them afterwards. That's the way you do it. In Stu's I mean, defense, concrete doesn't catch fire. Exactly. Plastic bags do. 
That's what he's been throwing them in, thinking they're an ashtray when they're not. It's just construction, and we're going to all burn to death because of him. Propane soaked plastic. We're bags. just like overlooking a mystery sealant that Billy yeah. sees. Yeah. No, it, we're not overlooking it. No, yeah, Mike is trying to get an ashtray, and I'm telling you, he's gonna burn everything to the ground. Not being overlooked. Not overlooked. Not overlooked. He's throwing. It. Look, he's right. gonna burn everything down. There was a lit cigarette. In a makeshift ashtray, I've since extinguished. Thank we you. shouldn't have put a plastic bag in that thing. Ooh, Maybe or, some sand or soaked it in propane. That yep. Yeah, we, sh we should. But there is now a receptacle for his cigarette butts. In a no in a number of different ways. I w I do. I mean, I want to get your expertise I do too. on Lakers <laughs> and Nuggets <laughs> and Heat and Celtics. But Stugatz with diva behavior is wildly, wildly <laughs> out of control. He's requested a makeup person, and I, he's muttering every break about needing makeup. Well, Dan, here's the deal, okay? When we were doing the show back at ESPN, we had a makeup person. We had a chair. I think her name was Myra. When she wasn't there, it was Juan. I miss her. I miss the conversations I had with her. I used to work out sports takes on her. She would be like, Stugat's great take. Run with it, Okay. She was like a producer. She there was, was a no friend. There was no one named Juan. His name was Lucio. Oh, Lucio. Lucio, one of the all-time greats. But here's the deal, Juan? Dan. I don't know who I was thinking about there. Uh, but just, Myra got right, correct? You just yeah. guessed. You said, oh, Hispanic guy. Let me throw out Juan. And it was mostly Myra. Myra, listen, Myra was number one. She was a bit chatty. She was makeup stylist number one. Okay, like QB1. Very one. chatty. <laughs> She didn't know anything about sports. I don't know why you'd be taking your takes from her. She did not Very know. Very nice. I was just working them out on her, and she would be like, that's a good one, good opinion, go with it. But more importantly. What did Juan think? <laughs> I didn't give as many takes to Juan because, you know, he's makeup stylist, too. How, have you, too. how yeah. have you lived in Miami so long, and even Latin people who come in and out of your life daily, you can't tell whether one's a Lucio or one's a Juan, and you just guess a random Juan because you didn't think of Armando first. Let's keep our eye on the ball here, Dano, okay? When we were at ESPN and Myra would apply the makeup and she'd do this thing with my hair, I would get a text every single morning first segment from my wife saying, you have never looked better than you look right now. And as I age, Dan, I look worse and worse. I need makeup. Same. You need makeup. We need makeup. We're back on TV. I am dying. I will do anything, and I don't know you who are to dying. ask. Yeah, we, we can all agree you are dying. I yes. don't know who to ask. You seem like a guy who can get stuff done around here, Dan. We need a makeup stylist. I need a makeup stylist. I do. To the point of Stugat saying that we're on TV again, I want to point out, the other day I was watching the show on my TV, watching it on DraftKingsNetwork.com, and it was glorious. You don't need to have a Samsung TV to do this. You can watch it on your TV. Just go to the web browser, enter DraftKingsNetwork.com, and it's boom. It's there. And it's like I'm getting ready in the morning, and I'm watching you guys have hijinks and stuff. I said, this is incredible. We have really arrived at the 21st century when you can just – Go to a website on your TV. It blew my that mind. That doesn't mean we don't look like shit, though. Dan, I'm kind of with Stugatz. When I see myself yeah. here, like I, no. I'm very no. pale. Like I need, I no. need to make. Go out into the sun, Dan. Don't indulge this. No, I'm everyone, telling you right I, now. I don't know. Everyone because is saying is, I look worse, no, and I don't look no. worse. I just really, don't look have up. one. You need it too, I mean, man. Like, he we're didn't all think. Pale. No, no, no. Well. Stugatz didn't think that this was a need of his until he saw an internal memo where someone came to record something and had this, and then he said, "Oh, I want that." Because that's how exactly how that happened. He goes, I want that person. Because someone else was coming to record something, and they got a makeup person, and then he wanted that. I'm telling you right now, I don't want to play the role of Samson. So you guys doesn't need a makeup person, okay? He can get a little makeup thing, a compact, whatever it's called, oh, and then yeah. put on some makeup himself. That's fine. I found out yesterday, Dan, and I don't know if you know what's going on. We have a plant person here, and there's a person hired just to decorate the office with plants. Juju? And I said, what? No, we don't need that. We don't need a plant person. We don't need a makeup person. If you don't think that you're happy with the way you look, go out in the sun, put on Billy, some makeup yourself, Billy, figure it out. Go yeah. on a diet if you think that you look bad. Stop smoking. Billy, wow. you are ready to run this company. Yeah. A you, plant And then I was like, I, I found out. I'm like, did I even know we had a plant person? They're I like, did we not. have plants? And I then learned, they started looking I, around. They're like, oh, there's plants everywhere. Guys, it does you, look good. You guys don't know what's happening here. I didn't even know that was a job. That's a profession. Someone decorates offices with plants. Right before our eyes, Billy is becoming a dad. 
That's a dad talking right there. No, but he's becoming a boss is what he's becoming. No, that's a dad. He's trying to help us with finances. I didn't know we had a plant person. You're not a dad. That's why you don't recognize Did you know we had plants? I didn't know we needed a makeup person. I did not know we had plants. And I don't know whether Stugatz is right. He might be right, but this feels to me a bit like the epidural that he takes every time his back hurts, which is let me put a needle in my spine instead of doing any work. He could also just not be killing himself with heaters that make him cough throughout this segment because he's been deeply unhealthy for a that, while. That has nothing to do with the heaters. It has, oh. it has everything to do with the granola bar eh, right before okay. we came on it. All right. Well, but I it's could. lodged in my but, throat. But right I don't, granola bar is probably I, the I, healthiest listen, thing you've done this month. I just want one back. I, I mean, Jesus. I, I was just going to say, all Let's I was just it. going to say, I don't know what Juan can do about the fact that you're going to dead concerts and killing yourself and coughing. I'm just worried about he's, my friend. He's been man. coughing the entire segment. Yeah. The entire segment, he's had his microphone off. I'm tearing up. Uh, well, Stugatz, this is happening. My right eye. What's makeup going to do? Just my right eye. It's weird. What is makeup going to do? Crocodile tears. Get the tears out of my eyes. About the fact that the audience has been reaching out to me saying, please help Stugatz. He's killing himself. I did my hair today. I mean. He did. I noticed. Back to back days. No hat. How about that? Because I shamed you by telling you you were wearing the same hat for three straight weeks. Listen, you've been wearing the same hat for 20 years. I haven't said a (laughs) word to you. I mean. (laughs) Awfully critical. I mean. In real life, I look fine. I mean, it's just camera tricks. Just not having one. I mean, that's right. Wait till you see me after one. I mean, <laughs> oh, I miss one. I believe Stu Gatz. I believe Stu Gatz in, in his his requirement not coming out of my nose. His now. need for a makeup person, and specifically not any makeup. No, person. but Billy, I do think Billy's Juan. right. What happened was evidently Mina came into town at TV, legitimate TV networks have makeup people. We don't run sometimes like a legitimate operation, which is how Stugatz disappears for months at a time, and we don't know where he is. Looking for Juan. <laughs> Always what? looking for Juan. Dan, you know what they say, though, right? Who's they? They, they, they said. It. it takes John to know Juan. <laughs> Go sit in the penalty box. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> <laughs> Aging, I am here to tell you, as the person who sits next to Stugatz, really, really stinks. And as people fight the vanities of television to stay in front of you looking young, a lot of people on television having a lot of work done. I don't understand how Bob Costas looks like a young boy close to 80, <laughs> but I, I'm assuming that there's some help there because it's hard to be on television for 50 years. Even if you look the healthiest, it's hard, right? There are people throughout sports. Mike's always shaming them. This guy's dying. This guy's plugging. This guy uh, is, is doing fake, all sorts of fake things to keep appearances here. And I'm telling you that one of the thing that ages both the healthy and the unhealthy is the deep, deep unfairness in taking Brian Windhorst, who has been slaving for your company for years, ever since LeBron got into the league. There's an economy around LeBron. Windhorst is the LeBron reporter. Windhorst is a worker. Windhorst is never going to say no. Windhorst is going to bust his ass for you at every turn. And that means please fly to France for a 45-second interview with Wembenyama <laughs> and look at 2.30 in the morning on television like you've just flown to France after a lifetime of flights and the playoffs are crazy. And that's deeply unfair to do to Windhorst. But, of course, he'll say yes, and he'll get on a plane, and you will kill him. You will, over time, kill him on television for 45 seconds of French sound of the guy with the longest arms you've ever seen. So great when he starts his hit with just, 
it's 2.30 here, and we're like, we can see it, Brian. Put it on the poll. Is ESPN actively trying to kill Brian Windhorst? I just wonder if he's going to be here for this series. He's Celtics. They might send him right back to Miami right after that. But Chris Cody is right. It says the time on his face. He doesn't need to tell us. <laughs> can you tell the time on Windhorst's face, or can Juan fix that? <laughs> Juan could fix anything. You, you, I mean, he fix Stu- me. Stugatz yeah, I mean. is filing a whole lot. Uh, Stugatz, you look good today. Thank you, you. You look like you cared about your appearance. Two days in a row. Turning over a new leaf, Dano. A tobacco leaf. <laughs> <laughs> hey <laughs> I Mike, that's real, right? You're going to have to get him an ashtray out there because he doesn't. No, there, have- there is, there's a bucket there. I mean, it doesn't have the typical ashtray things in it. We're, we're still fine-tuning it. There was a plastic bag that was getting a little warm because there was a cigarette that was still a little lit. But I've since gotten rid of it. and I'm, I'm quitting soon, Mike, just so you know. It's also what? advertised as a non-smoking building. So yeah. what, what are you doing it, with that? You should be outside, right? You shouldn't be so public about this. Mm. Well, Mike is, I mean. Mike, are you worried about this? Because you have uh, relationships. And, well, all of it. Yeah I'm, uh, yeah, I'm worried about it. We're not good guests. We just moved into this building. And I think I can speak for everyone here at the Elser. Oh, Life right. is so much better. Oh, right. We're in the dream. gym. We're, we're in the temple. Yeah, we, we have a balcony. We have places that we can go. Yeah. I did find out, though, that my executive bathroom on the 10th floor you could very clearly see if someone's pooping in that. We have to fix that. Yeah, it's very easy. There's a glass that is not like a two-way glass. It's yeah. like a one-way glass. Like, I see you if you're yeah. the shadow of someone sitting. Yeah, no, I uh, I walked up to that. Oh, window. Mike's wearing yellow underwear. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. Because I, I don't wear underwear. So that one's on you. That was Ever? Ever. Bird dogs. Ever. No, uh, that, bird dogs. What? Yeah. Moisture Wait. wicking. Wait, what? Yeah, no, like the underwear There's is in bird the- dog uh, sweatpants that you have on right now? No, no, no. For the most the part, I'm wearing in. underwear today, yeah. but 90% of the time I'm not wearing underwear because the underwear is built in. Bird That's dogs. uncomfortable. It's no, it's disgusting. super comfortable. It's the opposite. In no, South it's uncomfortable Florida, that knowing that there's only one piece that divides there's two me layers. And you. The, the second layer is built into the, so the pant. Either way, we're, keep your eye on the ball. He's trying. Well, I I'm went trying. To, I, went to, I went to the 10th floor today to go to my executive bathroom, and you know what the executive bathroom is. Basically, I just it's, it's a stall that has access to a faucet. In case things got really messy. I don't know what it is about a mean flying into town that makes us forever go through the toilet habits around here. I'm not going to get into the detail. The important thing is, I walked up to the 10th floor bathroom, my executive bathroom. It was occupied. It was occupied by someone sitting on the toilet. And brother, I saw everything. And it made me realize the last five times that I've used that bathroom, oh my God, Everyone can the see part that, everything the here. The part that you are leaving out for the audience, because God Almighty, this show is self-involved, even for my tastes, and I can be hugely self-involved. The executive bathroom is just a gym bathroom. It's what? not an executive bathroom. What? Yeah. It's, wait a secret. I was yeah, getting yeah. jealous. I was like, wait, Mike has a bathroom? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's an executive. What makes it an executive bathroom is you can lean over to the faucet. Yeah. So it's a handicap accessible bathroom, but also disabled. I call it uh, yeah, I disabled. I'm sorry. Apologies to anyone I offended. Handy I'll get capable. that right. I'll be better. Uh, so I run the faucet under there just in case, you know, it's a nice little bidet. That makes it executive for me. But the executive experience is now lost yeah. because everyone's been seeing my balls. Yeah. Tony, I'm glad you're amused by that. I'm glad this <laughs> I had the same observation, you. though, okay, Dan. Okay. The it's, other it's, day, I was like, you, I second, use it. you can see right through this. I would have preferred it from neither of you instead of from both of you. <clears throat> because I am deeply tired of every time Amin gets to arriving in town, it's a chat chat. Everybody wants to talk about their poop. I use a small stall always. Usually one that has small. like a flickering light that's off in the shadows that no one else wants to visit. And here's what happened to me yesterday. Oh. And you know this because you're in the chat. Yeah. I went to my executive bathroom. This uh-huh. is before the realization washed over me that everyone could see my balls. <laughs> I went to the executive bathroom. I, I went and I did the thing that I don't, that I needed the executive bathroom for. Right. And then afterwards, really? I realized. Oh, excellent subtlety there, Mike. <laughs> well, you, no, you don't want to get down in the <laughs> no, weeds no, on this no, stuff. You've already, you've hidden it so down well. All right, I was doing cocaine. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I realized, oh, no, there's, there's no toilet paper to clean up my cocaine. And <laughs> there was no toilet paper. And I wasn't going to pull the Greg Cody, which is use my hand and scoop oh, it out and clean it. I'm no. not doing that. Just, just, to, be, oh. just to be clear. I, I want just to be maximum overt in front of anybody in front of everybody about uh, what this company is and aspires to. 
You were of the opinion over the last two weeks of hearing yourself on the air that people didn't know you were on cocaine? That this was somehow well hit, that this was well hidden in the bathroom, that people couldn't see not only your balls, but that you had fully snorted all heat panther things. His eight balls. <laughs> Give it to him, man. Come on. Thank yeah. you. All right, so I wasn't doing coke this time. I, I was pooping, but there was no TP. None. There was no toilet paper, and I came to this realization. I came to this realization after I went, which will forever change my behavior Rookie because you move. gave me you gave me a, a great veteran tip, which is always before you go to in a public stall, check if there's TP. Now before I will you know. Can hit the seat before you're. Yeah. You put it, put sure. it on the poll, please, Juju at Lebetard Show. Before you go number two in public or in in a public bathroom, uh, do you check to see if there's toilet paper? So I go. And there's no TP. So what do I do? I'm not going to do the Greg Cody thing, which credit is card it. credit card it, scoop my hand in there and just run it under. I'm not, that's crazy to me. Credit card. There, there has to be a better way. So I pull up my, my bird dogs. No. Not all the way. No, 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 no. I, I give, I make sure there's breathing room. There you go. But then I walk downstairs. No, no, downstairs? No. Yeah. To, Wait, there's not to, another stall in there? No, no. The, that's what makes it executive, the exclusivity, the fact that it's a standalone in there oh. and that everyone can apparently see your balls. <laughs> and so I walk downstairs. <laughs> and that's I, a long walk, man. A lot of stairs. That's it's, a long it's walk. About, let's let's it's, hear him out. It's about 40 <laughs> stairs, and you can't do 40 <laughs> stairs that yeah, way. But, they're not, but there, there isn't a huge drop-off between stairs, so it allowed me to like kind of shuttle my way down there wow. like with – I'm going I, side I, to side. Mike, right. Mike I, I need to stop you for a number of different reasons. I've been trying to stop you for two weeks. I cannot do it. Um, I need to stop the entire group from how sophomoric this gets. However, I do just need to explain to the audience because I can't allow without explanation for their people to be listening and not understand what credit carding it is. <laughs> because it is one of the most disgusting things I have ever heard in the entirety of my more than half a century walking earth, how Greg Cody wiped his ass when he could not find toilet paper with his bare hand. To be clear, when you say credit carding it, we're talking magnetic stripe, not chip, right? <laughs> Yeah, old fashioned credit card. Right. Talking tip yes. drill on BET. The no yes. There's no tap yes. here. Such a great way to describe it. <laughs> now, I mean, uh, this is undeserved, and sometimes we have a two minute report after the show on penalties that were not deserved. So you might think that you've been wronged here. But in general, for bringing the spirit of this scent into the place, go sit in the penalty box. Oh, wow. Man. Oh. I didn't bring up the topic. I it didn't. comes with you. It's the, it's the smell in a bathroom after you've already used it. It arrives with you. This only happens when you're around, and I'm tired of it. I'm, like, legitimately tired of how this sport, uh, this show descends into sophomoric nonsense that, that always is the same unclever note here. I, I don't think this is sophomoric. This is a real-life dilemma, and we found a solution. Okay, so I'm shoveling down, minimizing the amount of... Uh, 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 verticality in my knees. Drippage. Yeah. Very oh, careful. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm trying to keep this as come clean as possible. Look, I, can't, I can't answer for the actions of others. So I go downstairs You're very gingerly. You're painting a picture, though. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm painting a picture of panic. I think anyone can identify with the situation that I was in. And so I go downstairs to where there are more stalls. And thankfully, the executive stall that was there... See... You guys forced me into saying handicap earlier when I've been trying to be nice and call it executive. So I go into the disabled. Wow, the that is a deflection. <laughs> That's the reason that that mistake was made because yes. you we were not sophisticated yes. because enough you're not sophisticated to call the enough. gym bathroom the executive. Yes. It's also the reason that Stu Gatz thought Lucio was Juan. I, I mean, I was trying what? to explain in great detail that there's a sink there. I mean, use your imagination, folks. On, only in this respect, don't. So then... I go into that stall and I run the water under the TP and and then it's all it's all fine and dandy. Mm -hmm. But the moral of the story is if you go on the tenth floor here in the Elser and you use the executive bathroom, we can see you. they can see your balls. <laughs> is ESPN trying to kill Windhorse? <laughs> what was that interview 
The Spurs are good for 10 years. Pop is unretired. Pop's good. People are yelling about it's fixed. The lottery's fixed because it everybody, feels fixed. everybody I mean, wanted that player. You know, you said you could uh, tell time by looking at Brian Windhorst's face. I can't when I look at Sugats because every time is 5.30 a.m. Yeah. One think- might say this was Greg Popovich's greatest coaching season of all time. Do you think Pop was, like, a little angry? He was like, oh, now I'm stuck a few more years. <laughs> <laughs>
incredible defensive players that can take over a game even though when they seemingly seem like they're missing on the offensive end. And that's what playoff hockey is. I thought that Mike Ryan and Roy's favorite uh, Panther player ever after Pavel Burry uh, would be Huberdeau, but I believe that Mike Ryan has now, and I don't know if this is true of you, Roy, I believe Mike Ryan now speaks of Kachuk in a language that I've only heard him talk about, like Dwayne Wade in fandom. Oh, this dude's willing to do anything as a superstar to get me the feel good. He loves dirty goals. This guy's unbelievably tough. Nobody knows how tough this human being is. Yeah, Matthew Kachuk is a player that this team has never had before. He got a power forward over here scoring goals like that in the dirty areas. We never really had that in franchise history. Yeah, he's not quite to the level of Pavel for me just because, and Pavel had zero playoff success. I think he had one playoff appearance in a Panthers sweater and it was a four-game sweep at the hands of the New Jersey Devils. But his goal-scoring output was insane. If Pavel Bure was on a fast break, it was automatic. It was super exciting. And I, I had Russian Rocket posters all over my wall. And Pavel Bure just signifies something to me when I was most deeply passionate about hockey that Kachuk – look, this is year one of Matthew Kachuk. <laughs> if this run is already the second greatest run in the history of the franchise, and it's a direct result of the type of hockey that he's brought here. So if Matthew Kachuk somehow gets to a Stanley Cup final, in my mind he does become the greatest Florida Panther ever after just one year in the sweater. Roy, it seems this is, to me, the most, this is the most impossible thing for me as a Cuban kid who also grew up in this market and really cared about hockey 25 years ago, but not so much since. Holy what a good trade for 10 years. Yes. Absolutely. Holy. I'm locked up in his prime. You know who I haven't missed for one second this playoff run? Oh boy. Jonathan Huberdeau. Right. I haven't missed Mackenzie Weger either. Eat it, Witty. I haven't missed Who them. makes that trade? Right. What franchise makes the trade that they made of we've got the best offense. That's not going to win. Get Kachuk. Holy. It's the best trade we've – one of the best trades we've ever seen in the sport. We weren't close, I think, is why. Even though we were the President's Cup trophy winner, it was just – we just – when we got in the playoffs, they didn't feel close. Yeah. I and mean, now, they made it to the second round, right? Barely, though. I know. I know. Made it to the second round, and that COVID year – look, two years ago – um, I'm not going to say the COVID year because there was a bubble year that the Lightning played the Stars in the Stanley Cup final. Lightning won that one. But there was all sorts of realignment. It – Saw the Hurricanes, the Lightning, and the Panthers all in the same division, the Central Division presented by Discover. And they were, for my money, you can make an argument, they were the three best teams in hockey. And they all just had a beat up on one another. And because of the random hockey played that year, you had what is essentially an Eastern Conference final in the first round between the Florida Panthers and the Lightning. So it's a little harsh to say that they'd never been past the second round, but it's ac it was accurate until last year outside of one year in uh, in 1996. Oh, but, but it's crazy to say, like, you guys, when Stugatz limps in with, well, they made it to the second round, and the rest of you are like, well, they weren't close. Roy wanted Tampa smoke. And it's like, nope, that's what a dynasty looks like. We aren't close to that. Can't score against it. Scared of it. It's bigger, badder. It's going to wipe the floor with us in five games because that's what it takes. The way they play, the way they manipulate the salary cap, the way that they wipe us out of the playoffs, even if we've got the most exciting team in hockey. I I pointed out they made the second round to really support your point of who does that after making the second round and being the best team in the regular season. Yeah. I they did, and they lost in five in the in the first season. No, that was six. They lost six in their first playoff matchup. They actually got swept last year by Tampa Bay. And while they advanced against Washington, that that wasn't a very encouraging series either. And it was very clear come seasons end after they got destroyed, dismantled, and swept by Tampa Bay, the changes had to happen. Nobody really expected the changes to happen with Huberto. No one – like, we knew that we needed to make some improvements, but they were limited by their cap flexibility. So you thought, man, can we get anybody to take this Bobrovsky – uh, contract. We're probably going to have to give up people that are that have value to get rid of some of these bad contracts. We're going to have to win within the margins. And they went for broke. They went for Matthew Kachuk, and they gave up their franchise's all-time leading point getter. And they gave up Mackenzie Weger, who the advanced stats would tell you was a very good, important defenseman for them. And Calgary, Flan uh, Calgary Flames fans were super happy with the trade. They thought they were going to be even better. They ended up missing the playoffs. Huberdeau has the greatest point drop-off in NHL history. And Matthew Kachuk and his identity permeated throughout this entire team. 
And this team did not make moves once a regular season came for all their struggles, for all the fire Maurice chance that came, for all the we got to do something at the deadline because the first half of this season has been a disaster. They stayed the course. They were patient, and now they're the hottest team in hockey. Well, they didn't have money. As you said, cap flexibility, oh, they did not have, so they couldn't make any money. This is a one-shot deal, too, because next year they're, they're going to have to make a decision between Forsling and Montour because they're tied to that Ekblad contract, and now Ekblad has found himself at best third-best defenseman, and this was a generational defenseman for this franchise. It's been here for a decade. Roy, please, as a local hockey broadcasting and journalistic legend, I wish for you and somebody – who knows the ins and outs of hockey uh, in a way that gets into the granular microscopic stuff and has history with this town and this sport. That trade in hockey ranks where in terms? I, and, in, I've, he just gave you the empiricals of Huberto left, and when he left, his point drop-off was the largest in the history of the sport. Where is that trade going to go if Kachuk stays healthy and and enjoys dirty goals for the rest of the 10 years that he's got on his contract? High up there because you don't see 100 points, uh, point scores getting traded for each other. So that, that's going to be – it's the biggest trade in franchise history. It's not as big as the Gretzky trade from Edmonton to Los Angeles. No. But – that's what do you that's mean? Huge. No, you're what doing do you it wrong. You want to get Tony in. You have to say this is the biggest trade in the history of South Florida sports. <laughs> like well, there has never I, yeah, been a trade yeah, that's I'm been bigger it's the best. ever. Yes, it is. And it's by the way, sports, Tony, absolutely. look up Al Montoya. Look up Al Montoya. That's going to get you into hockey. Cuban American <laughs> goaltender. Oh, I know about now. Al Montoya. That's one of the guys I do know. Roy, are you saying? I, I, and I think Billy's coaching is good here. Are you willing to proclaim officially with uh, your credibility at stake as a hockey legend. broadcasting legend, Florida mm -hmm. Panthers legend, that the Kachuk trade is the greatest trade in the history of South Florida sports? Yeah, I would. Wow. I mean, technically, Shaq was a trade. Technically, LeBron was, <laughs> LeBron a, trade. was a trade. LeBron yeah. was a trade. Jimmy yeah. Butler was a trade. I think it's LeBron. Not LeBron. a real trade. Yeah, LeBron's not first. We yeah. traded LeBron Josh Richardson. Did. Roy, you ran Butler. away from it very quickly as soon as you said LeBron. <laughs> Triple uh, down. No, that is definitely Triple not. down, it might Roy. Be, it might be the third best. Roy, Roy it's now it might falling be. All right, I'm out. Yeah. I'm just third showing best, I'm out. No, man, no. We're not counting sign. We're not counting sign-in trades. Roy. He's just having a Although, if you're not counting sign-in trades. wasn't Kachuk a sign-in trade? I think it was. Yeah, it was a sign-in. Trade. So we yeah. have to count right. sign and trade. Count sign. So it's not even actively the best sign and trade in <laughs> yeah, the market. That would okay, be Jimmy Butler. Three. three. Number three. It was number three. You're doing this wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to look at another mega trade that, that benefited, it, it actually benefited both teams. The Jack Eichel trade was a massive trade for <laughs> Vegas. Yeah, Eichel. Please. He's a tremendous player. And Buffalo got better, too, yeah. by that trade. That was a huge mega deal. Just a funny name. Roy, I am sorry to inform you of this on oh, air. God damn it. It's embarrassing and it's public uh, that I have to do this to you, but I am going to declare it officially over. You will never be good at the take. <laughs> Tyreek Hill was a trade, too. <laughs>